what to do when you've decided that homeschooling is the best choice for your family. Now typically, the next questions parents ask is what curriculum should I choose? Now, that can wait. There are a few points to consider before you want to buy a single thing. Now, a successful school year needs a little planning, and there are two things that will help you more than any others. Two topics you want to make sure to cover well in advance of the outlay of any cash are, one, creating clear goals for you and your students. Knowing what you want to accomplish in your first year of schooling, as well as how you want to transfer that knowledge, will help you to know what kinds of tools you're even looking for. Secondly, I want you to take some time to think about the learning styles of your children and yourself. These play a huge role in how we receive information. Knowing more about how your child learns will help shape the kind of materials that you'll want to choose. Now, there are many goals that might need to be addressed in your plan to homeschool. Some of your goals will be educational and academically driven. Do you have a student who's missing foundational skill sets? Now, this can cause them to have trouble in learning in specific areas. Missing concrete reading skills or early math skills can cause learning to come to a halt as the workload accelerates. Oftentimes, it won't be a problem in early school, but as you get to the mid-elementary level, you'll see a student struggle. That's a good sign that you have some skills you might need to go back and remediate. It's not an uncommon occurrence, even with gifted students. Children who can easily navigate the school system with advanced intellect sometimes need a time of remediation and skill building when they're moved into more advanced coursework. I hear from parents whose child was advanced in mathematics and now they're struggling with the transition to higher math. Often the struggle lies not in math essential knowledge, but instead in the fact that the child might be meeting with difficulty for the very first time. Mastery of self and problem solving are important factors in homeschooling. One vital skill to intentionally work on could be building patience with problem solving. Forcing a child to slow down is as vital as accelerating in their education. We have to remember, education is not a race to the finish. The goal of education is the mastery of self and the development of an appetite for learning that lasts the child's entire life. Now, you might need to create a plan for remediation to learn those important skills. Building foundational skills is going to help you in the long run of your homeschool. Sometimes it's important that we take time to lay that firm foundation before we even jump into core academics. Knowing what skills you plan to work on will help you choose a curriculum and learning tools that address those areas, especially because there are so many tools to choose from. Most curriculum companies have a placement test that you can print or administer online. You can have assessment tests done at a local agency or even through your public school. There are skill assessments and guides in many books and online, and often you can find those at your public library. In the early years, I read many books like Ruth Beachick's Three R's and Language Wars to help me become familiar with common expectations for early childhood learning. Surprise, you're now an educator. It's time to get an education of your own as well. There's absolutely no subject you could not find another parent or an expert that has written about. I am convinced that there has never been a better time in history to be a homeschooling parent. The only drawback is the overwhelming amount of information that's available to us. If you aren't confident on a subject or a topic, start doing your own research. This is one way that I developed the confidence I needed to home educate my own kids. Now another academically driven goal Maybe one that you've had to make with a student who wants the freedom to work at an advanced level. Your goal might be to change the pace of their education. You also might need to find out where they need to be placed academically. This is an important time to do some research in teaching a gifted child. Take the time to do the research looking for materials and teaching methods that will help your child learn best. An online search will find a multitude of resources that will help them learn the skills they need to advance to where they are now challenged. The beauty of homeschooling is that you can allow your child to work at the level they're capable of 
in each subject. Now, I've had students who are great readers and terrible in math. And I've had students who are great in math and absolutely hated writing. Now, the nice thing about homeschooling is that there's not a grade that they have to be in across the board. I was able to determine what level they began in each subject for the school year. And we accelerated through one year's work at whatever pace and level they were in. By doing this, you can allow your student to advance in the subject areas they're interested in and not hold them back from a place where they'd like to explore deeper and go further. Are you creating goals that are relational? If you school at home for the first time, you're going to have to create a whole new life for all of you. This is a huge transition. And I want to encourage you to take the time to actually recognize that. Children are resilient and flexible, and it is a good thing, but you have to consider how this change might make them feel, even if they were the one who initiated the idea of homeschooling in the first place. Homeschooling is a great time and place to gather together as a family and regroup through many transitions and changes of schedule. Maybe the kids are older and you're adding a part-time job or even full-time work. You could be getting to know a new city with a recent change of environment. Have you moved? There are times when we need to step back from a heavy academic schedule and give time to a lighter educational model so that we can adjust as a family to new changes in our life. This can also be to your advantage during a lengthy sickness or an extended recovery. Homeschooling gives you the opportunity to stick to your core subjects and maybe shed some of the other subjects that you don't need to be working on right now. When creating a plan for your homeschool, be sure to give room for academic and non-academic goals alike. Now, when we're making goals, we should consider learning styles. Now, this is not just your child's learning style, but this could be your learning style as well. What does your child like to learn and where are they struggling? These are important clues. And if you don't have the input from the school, you might need to spend some time studying your child to see how they connect best to learning materials. Now there are a lot of learning styles. There is visual, oral, verbal, physical, logical, solitary, and social. Between those, there are varying degrees that children respond to materials that come to them in these modes. Knowing your child's learning style and the way that they respond best will help you choose materials that will lead them to better learning activities. Now I say consider your child's learning style, but this is the thing. You're going to be the one doing the teaching and your learning style needs to be taken into consideration. Yes, you might have a hands-on child, but there are ways that you can create hands-on tools that don't create more work for you. I am not a particularly hands-on mom. Most of our learning materials are free play and free learning with very few structured hands-on activities. I'm an auditory learner. I learn best by hearing things spoken out loud. I love podcasts. I love learning online. Some of my kids learn that way best. And we chose a curriculum that had a lot of read-alouds as part of the subjects. The second group of kids, not as strong in the auditory category. So we've had to change the way we school. Knowing about your kid's learning style will help you make a transition and the changes and help you make decisions to serve your family best with their education. A good way to discover clues about your learning style is how you like to be productive in your everyday life. Do you like creating workflows? Do you like accountability? What kind of level of instruction do you expect in a learning material? These are good things to look at when you're looking at a curriculum for your family that you will have to use every day. One way that I've explored the kind of materials that work best for me is by understanding more about my personality. I suggest taking an in-depth temperament analysis. I had mine done by my local pastor and it was a great advantage in the early years of my marriage. More recently, I've taken the Four Tendencies test from Gretchen Rubin's same titled book. I've discovered the Enneagram and Strength Finders. All of these things reveal more information about who I am. And when we understand ourselves and the choices we make, 
We can make better decisions about the kinds of materials we want to use to help us stay accountable and on task. That information can help us be a better parent and homeschool leader. Now, one of the things about identifying your learning style and how you receive information best is that when you begin to explore a curriculum, you can find what matches your whole family. Now, I had a friend who introduced me to Sunlight Curriculum. It's the curriculum we've been using for 15 years. But ironically, the friend who introduced me to it does not like being told what to do. She doesn't like a lot of instruction, and having a curriculum who told her every day the exact steps that she needed to do, she found disconcerting, and actually gave up the curriculum after one year. For myself, I call my binder my mom. I love it. I love being able to open the binder and know exactly what's expected of us every single day. Every day, I check off the things I do, and I have the flexibility to move things forward or backwards. But I love knowing that I can go to my binder and I have everything laid out for me. Now, knowing what you like will help you decide what kind of curriculum and the level of input you need to make you feel happy. The beauty of homeschooling is that we're choosing curriculum. We can choose to incorporate the things we love. We want to create a school that inspires learning. We want to dig deeper and give our kids opportunities to create memorable learning experiences. That means maybe exploring a new pattern of learning. Classroom sitting and reading is maybe not the best way to explore a new material. Maybe we can look outside of the box in the ways we learn. When we read Carry On Mr. Bowditch a few years back, it sparked an interest in sailing for my older kids. We got to dig into materials about sailing at the library. We watched videos on sailboats and movies about sailing. We dug deeper because we had the opportunity to go in depth on a subject because we were still interested when the book was over. This is one of the best things about homeschooling is that you don't have to close a book and walk away if you're interested. You can carry that on as far as your child wants to go. Now, another thing about homeschooling is you can make your child's interests creditable, not only at the elementary level, but at high school. My daughter's music lessons became part of her college transcript. Their interests can be made measurable, obtainable, and creditable. And what does that mean for your child? Well, it shows that their interests matter. Their interests not only matter, but are important and valuable. And that goes a long way into raising our child's self-esteem, their well-being, and a respect for their own interests and values in the future. Now, as we create our goals and values for the coming school year, this will lay the groundwork for a school year that will meet your family's needs in a way that is beyond just picking out a book or purchasing a curriculum you will regret. Take the time to really lay out some core goals that you want to accomplish for the year, and that will help you when we talk about building a curriculum that works for your family. This is Amber Smith from 200fingersandtoes.com, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Hey, if you've got a friend who's thinking about homeschooling, would you mind sharing this episode with them? My heart's desire is to help entrepreneurial families chase their goals while they chase their kids. And I truly believe that homeschooling is one of the best ways that they can do that. This episode is brought to you by the In Due Season course, where you can build your roadmap for your own personalized homeschool journey. Listen, beginnings are great and planning for the end is satisfying, but the middle season of homeschooling can be a long and winding, uncharted road. I want to help ensure a strong finish by helping you live well in the middle. Into Season is a course that helps you with practical lessons, life examples, and encouragement that will serve you from that anxious first day until the moment you walk your child down an aisle in a cap and gown or send them back to public school because you've resolved the issues that you wanted to work on. Now, simple shifts in your school setup and challenging conversations is what the course is made of, specifically designed to have you get the very best outcome from your homeschooling year. The lessons cover relationship building, like showing love uniquely to your child, 
creating a school that fits your personal needs by helping you transform the way you approach teaching your children. I want you to create a personalized map that will last you your entire homeschool lifetime. So in due season course, where you can join us to explore several other vital and powerful truths that will ensure that this will be your best school year ever. My heart's desire is that you never lose sight of the end of the road in your homeschool journey. And we wanna help ensure a strong finish by helping you live well in the middle. You can find out more about the In Due Season course at induseason.net. Now, another thing we can look at in our everyday life for our productivity is educational deficits. Now, when planning our homeschool year, one thing that I hear from parents that makes them shrink back is that they don't have enough knowledge in a specific area. I'm here to tell you, homeschooling materials are made with parents in mind. The publication authors know and understand that parents need leading and guiding during these teaching times. The materials are made for you and me to be able to teach our children and for them to be able to learn. Oftentimes, my kids say they can't find an answer in one of their books. And I have to tell them, listen, if the answer wasn't in the book, parents would return the book. Publishers are smart. They make their materials useful for homeschool leaders, parents, and the students. What if you do have a deficit in an area of your education? What can you do? Well, do what I do. I've learned ahead. I've done tons of reading and studying in specific areas where I felt like I was inadequate or not prepared. You can find the resources you need. You can even take a course online if you wanted to. You can have confidence in the materials that you're using to teach by planning ahead, by knowing the materials and finding a curriculum that teaches in a way that you understand. Before you find a curriculum, I want you to create some measurable and obtainable goals for you and your children. Now we can do this in our academics, in our personal, relational, and skill type settings. What does this mean? Well, we can make goals where we want to be educationally. Yes, we want to progress through a full year of math. We want to learn how to spell. We may want to end a curriculum book or begin another one. Those would be your academic goals. We may have personal goals in our homeschool time. Maybe we want to practice some practical skills, household skills, relational skills. Maybe there's a relationship you want to build or help your child develop a relationship skill. And we've done those things like overcome shyness by helping our children buy things on their own at the store. These were skills that you can write down because they're measurable. You can see at the end of the year whether you've accomplished this goal. Skill-oriented goals are things like, do you want your child to learn how to ride a bike? Do you want to build something together? The beauty of homeschooling is that the goals you create, you can build into your educational plan, but you can't do that if you don't write the goals down first. Another way you can create measurable and obtainable goals is to be very clear about why you're homeschooling. These are the things that made you choose homeschooling and they're exactly the outcomes you want to see produced in your family and in your child's life. Now, I created a mini course that would create a free why page. This is a one-page sheet that you can go to to remind you of exactly why you chose to homeschool in the first place. I use this why page often when I'm frustrated or when I lose sight of my goals. Oftentimes, I just want to check in and be re-inspired about why I chose to homeschool my family. And my why page does exactly that. I'll leave a link in the show notes so you can download the why page for free. Now, another thing we want to look at is what is working for your kids. I do this in my homeschool because I want my goals to create a win for them every day. I take time to observe and get to know what they like. I know it's hard, but as a parent, I try not to make a judgment about their interests. My son loved gaming and I was not a fan, but... When I took the time to really explore his interests, I came to find that there were a lot of things he was learning in his game time. I understand that group communication and communication skills and all were being developed, 
When I had an open mind to his interests, I was able to actually see them with a different point of view and see the educational input that he was getting at the time. Now, maybe your child has an interest in music or art. Now, find a way that you can incorporate their interests into your school. Research how you can use these skills and interests, and maybe where they're used in everyday life. I had my son write a persuasive paper about gaming, and I was amazed to discover tons of ways that gaming is used to train professionals in everyday life. Did you know that brain surgeons are actually great gamers? Homeschooling gives your kids a place to share their desires and interests with you.